بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وبارك على أشرف الأنبياء المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد الحمد لله we continue from our discussion regarding كتاب الحج where previously we were discussing the uh, مواقيت the mawaqit for the hajj, anyone performing hajj, or the mu'tamir, the individual that is performing umrah. And the mawaqit are of how many types? Two. There are? Two, two types. Two. And they are? Zamaniya makani, yani referring to time, referring to place. So the miqat referring to time is referring to is is in relation to what? Um, so if you're doing the Hajj Tamatu or the Hajj Kiran, the time that you can do the Umrah. So it's the time for the Umrah that goes along with that Hajj. Naam. So the, the time for the Umrah that goes along with the Hajj. So if you're doing Hajj Tamatu, Naam or Hajj Kiran, then when you do the Umrah for the Hajj, and when is that time? Within what? After Ramadan, yeah, and specifically what though? Shawwal, the month of Shawwal, the whole month of Shawwal, the whole month of Dhul Qa'da, and the beginning of Dhul Hijjah, no? the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah essentially. Um, the first 8 days, 8, 9 days. So, as for the Miqat, which is Makaniya, then what is understood by that? The Miqat, which is Makaniya. <clears throat> the location and what well, what is what what do you understand from it though? Because you must be in the state of ihram before they enter that location. Nah, so you have to be in the state of ihram yani before ent- before passing that location. You can enter the state of ihram at that location as well. Nah, you can enter the state of ihram at that location. And how many did we discuss from the Mawakit that are Makaniya? Four? Five? Which one? Five? Five? What are they? So, the Miqat for Ahlul, Ahlul Medina is? Dhul Hulayfa. And then Miqat for the people of uh, of the Sharq Tad Irq and the Miqat of uh, Najd Naam and the Miqat of Misr and Sham Juhfa and then the Miqat for Ahl Makkah. Depends. Depends on what? If they wish to perform Umrah or Hajj. So it depends upon whether they are performing <coughs> Umrah or the Hajj. So where is the Miqat if they're performing Umrah? Hill. Adnan Hill. Adnan Hill, yeah, the, the closest place outside of the Haram area. And where is the Miqat if they are performing? Uh, Hajj from their homes. From their homes. So, then we discussed as well the Miqat for the individual that is performing uh, Hajj or Umrah, but they, they live closer to Mecca than any of the Muaqit. So their home is closer than the Miqat itself. Then when, where, do they, where do they assume Ihram? The question makes sense. Where, if they live closer, where do they assume a haram? From their home. Naam. An example of that is which city? Jeddah. Naam. So they uh, they assume the haram from Jeddah. Type. As for today. 
then what we wish to discuss, inshallah ta'ala, is the discussion around the ihram itself. The ihram itself. <clears throat> and so Ibn Qudam, rahimahullah, begins by mentioning, man arad, and so, but rather, beginning with Bab al-Ihram, Bab al-Ihram, the chapter of the Ihram. And Shaykh Ubaid, he mentions, yani, al-Ihram, huwa niyyat al-dukhul, fi nusuk, bi kawli labbek. Wal ma'loom, محل النية القلب وتلذف به غير هذا بدع. and so what is understood from al ihram is that it is the intention of entering into particular actions from the rites of Hajj. remember we said rites spelled what? R I T E S. R I T E S. Not rites as in R I G H T S. Now, I write in you know, referring to the rituals, in you know, the rites, in you know, the rituals of Hajj, and not the you know, rites referring to hukuk. So, and so the ihram is the intent of entering into the state of it, uh, the, the intent of performing those rituals with the statement labbaik. The statement labbaik. And as is affirmed, and we understand, the niyyah, the intention, his place is the heart. The person's intention is established from the heart. And if a person was to make that intention or state that intention upon the tongue in any other place, then this is a bid'ah. Naam. Furthermore, as well, as we discussed previously, that Aslan, essentially, when a person makes a statement upon the tongue, then this is not them making a statement of their intent. Rather, the intent has occurred before that, as mentioned by Sheikh Fawzan. The intent has occurred before that. And rather, the goal, la beg, then this is from the actions and the rights of Hajj or Umrah. As a person is performing an action from the rights of Hajj or Umrah, اقتداعاً بالنبي Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, taken in the Prophet ﷺ following his example. Thereafter, Muqaddam goes on to mention, "Man arad al-ihram, man man arad al-ihram astuhba lahu an yaktasila, wa tinadzafa, wa tatayba, wa tajarda an al-maqid, wa yalbis izar, wa rida abiyadain nadifin." And so. Ibn Qudama, he mentions that whoever intends to enter the state of Ihram, then he is mustahab, is recommended for such an individual to perform the ghusl and cleanse oneself and perfume themselves and to wear Clothing that is not, يعني, does not have stitching, unstitched clothing. And so this is made up of the, the cloths. One part is the izar upon the bottom half, and the other part is upon the top half. So, and this is, يعني, and they have to be both be white, clean, two clean white, يعني, cloths. So, is this something universal for everyone? Taib. So it's for who then? For the rijal. Naam, it's for the rijal, for the men. So it's for the men to wear this, this, this particular clothing. And what's understood from this is, this is the lips of the haram. Of course, it has to be worn يعني, with that, that intent as well. With that niya. Sheikh Abay mentions, as for the nisa, 
فليس عليهن ثياب معينة. As for the women, then they do not have anything that is, there's no specific clothing upon them to wear. So there's nothing specified for the women to wear. بشرط أن لا تكون الملابس ولا تكون ملابس ملابس الرجال. With the condition that they are not, they do not wear the clothing of the men. So they do not wear the clothing of the men. وَمِنَ الْغَرِيبِ You may find sometimes that the yeah, and the people they when they come for Hajj, my fellow, they come from all different parts of the world, and of course, a nurse. Tafawatuna of different levels in terms of their knowledge on to that to, to that fact they're jahal. And it's not you know it's not something which is unheard of to see women coming to Mecca wearing the ihram and the libas of the Rijal. It's not unheard of. Based upon the jahal, based upon the jahal. So I have been uh, I mean, it was narrated to me one time that someone saw a woman from uh, from a different land. And she came wearing the izar and the top half, top cloth of the male and the kufi. And she's attending hajj in this manner. Now, this is a, you know, a clear indication of the jahl that they, that, they, uh, that they were upon. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. And so... This is what it must have that they wear that they clean themselves and they perfume themselves and this is in order to when you remove any unnecessary or detestable smells from themselves and this is done before they enter the state of ihram due to the fact and we'll go through it later that <coughs> It is uh, not permissible, and it's something that breaks their state of haram or harms the state of haram if they perfume themselves whilst in that state. Now, if they perfume themselves whilst in the state, so they can perfume themselves before they enter that state, but not thereafter. And thereafter, Ibn Qudami mentions, Thumma yasalli raka'atayn. نعم ثم يصلي ركعتين يحرم عقبيهما وهو أن ينوي الإحرام. And so with this he prays two rakah. He prays two rakah whilst in the state of إحرام. With two rakah, yani, with the intent of entering the state of ihram, and now, so he, after the salah, he intends the state of ihram. So is the tartib clear? So he 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 wears the clothing. He has he has the shower. He wears the clothing. He perfumes himself. Then he prays two rakah. Thereafter, he enters the state of ihram. Naam, he enters the state of ihram. So he intends with that salah, this is the last action before he enters that state of ihram. And the proof for that being what is mentioned of Ibn Abbas, what is mentioned by Ibn Abbas, where he states that the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, made an obligation to enter the state of ihram now once the person leaves the salah hina faraga min salati yani when the person leaves the salah and he ends the salah now so this is what these are the actions of the individual and we used to have أن ينتق به ويشترط ويقول اللهم إني أريد نسك فلان. And so, 
it is from a condition, from the conditions that the person states this upon the tongue. Aye, that they enter the state of ihram. And they state, Allahumma inni uridu nusuk fulan. Yani, oh Allah, indeed I intend to perform these particular rites. Yani, referring to hajj or umrah. And thereafter he mentions as well that if I am, ref- I am uh, not prevented from this, then, uh, now, so he mentions that I, in terms of if he's prevented from this, and how he asks to be ref- yeah, and he removed from that state. Uh, something withholds him from completing his nusuk. They removed from that state. Likewise, when a person intends, I was referring to Hajj as well, when a person intends to perform the Hajj, then they have a choice between yani, the three types of Hajj which we discussed. There's a choice between the Hajj of Tamatwa. The Hajj al Kiran and the Hajj al Ifrad. And so it's upon the individual when beginning and entering the state of Ihram that he mentions I, what he intends to do. Naam, I, the Hajj that he intends to perform. Naam. And so. If, for example, the person, he's performing the, uh, yani the Hajj al Then he makes the Ihram, or he, he mentions the Ihram, and makes a statement, yani Mufridan. So he makes a statement by itself, because he's only performing Hajj. Naam. If the person is performing a Quran, and the Quran is what? What's Quran? Hajj Quran? No. Is that when a person performs the Umrah and they remain in the state of Ihram and thereafter perform Hajj? So there's no break in terms of the Ihram. So they perform Umrah, remain in the state of Ihram, then they perform Hajj. If the person does that, then they first they make the the into ihram, perform it for the umrah. Then they end, then they add on to that the intent of the hajj. So they add on to that the intent of the hajj. And this is for the one that Siani performs in the Hajj al Kiran. And as mentioned before, the Hajj, which is the better of the three, is the Tamatra. And so the person, when performing the Hajj of Tamatra, then they make the intention of Ihram first for what? For Umrah. Then they come out of that state of Ihram, and then they make the intent again, and they, make, they, they enter the state of Ihram again for the Hajj. Now, I mean, this is regard. This is regard to the tamatta. As um, now, thereafter, as for the one that is in the state, then he mentions the words "la bik Allahumma la bik." Now, "la bik Allahumma la bik." La shuika la kala bik. In Alhamda, one Ni'mata, like a Mulk, La Shuri Kalak. And so he mentioned these words was in the state of Ihram, and within this, within Talbiya, no doubt, is the statements of Tawheed. An affirmation of Tawheed. Uh, 
And so, Sheikh Abayd, he mentions, فَمَنْ حَجَّ وَإِنْدَهُ التَّوْهِيدِ ظَاهِرًا وَبَاطِنًا فَهَجَّهُ مَقْبُولٍ إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهِ And so, if a person performs hajj, and he has tawheed, يعني مانا which is apparent, and that which is within, then this individual's hajj, is accepted inshallah and he goes to say لكن إذا كان التوحيد على اللسان فقط ويدعو إلى غير الله فلا يكبال منه and so if however this person their hajj is upon the tongue alone or the the tawheed rather is upon the tongue alone. So what they're stating is just merely upon the tongue. And within this as well, within this mentioning, is that they call upon other than Allah. Then it could not be said within that Hajj that will be accepted from them. And so, these words that the Muharram states is an affirmation of the Tawheed that they are upon. And with this as well, what is mustahab is that they mention it plentifully and they raise the voice. يعني ورفع الصوت بها لغير النساء Naam, and they raise the voice by way of this talwiyah. However, this is not reserved for Nisa. And Abdullah, Sheikh Abdullah bin Basam, he mentions, he mentions as a comment upon this in relation to the women. Why? Because they are the aura. Yani referring to the women, in, 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 they in totality are aura. And so their voice is inclusive of that. And so it's similar as well to what is mentioned in relation to the, uh, the legislation of the Adhan. Legislation of the Adhan. Where Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Ibn Rufthaymini mentions that it's not upon the women to call the adhan. Naam. Hatta even if they're amongst themselves. It's not upon them to call the adhan. Why? Because the women are not ahlul i'lan. Naam. The women, they are not individuals that give and are there to announce anything and openly announce things to the people. And so... The raising of the voice in any any way, shape, or form is not legislated, and rather, uh, this is something which is not uh, now. It's not legislated for the women. Allah Taala knows best. We are akad ida ala nechizan or habata wadian or semi malabian or faala mahzuran nasian. وَلَقِيَ رَاكِبًا وَفِي أَدْبَارِ الصَّلَةِ وَبِالْأَسْحَارِ And so, <coughs> it's mentioned as well that it's even more emphasized for them to do so when they are on a raised part of the land. So raised ground. Naam. Or they are descended into valleys. So that they be heard making the talbiya or if they do an action yani from the things that break or enter upon the ihram when they do this action nasian so they do it by way of forgetting then in this regard then they should repeat this as well these words this word naam so these are the examples of when they do so naam so, for example, when they're, in, when they're upon higher ground, when they're upon higher ground, 
or when they're descending into the valleys. So, or they, they do action which is mahadur. For example, we'll go through them in the next lesson, the things that harm the ihram or break that state of ihram. From these actions is the cutting of the nails. So a person, yansa, he forgets and he cuts his nails. Then what is encouraged that he continues to do this? Likewise as well, at the end of the salawat, in the salawat maktuba, yeah, it's referring to the obligatory prayers. So at the end of the obligatory prayers, then he continues with this talbiyah. Naam, and when the night and the day is approaching, and when the night and the day is approaching, and so <clears throat> this is due to what is narrated in the hadith, uh, the hadith of Tawil, the long hadith, which is the Sifat al Hajj, Sifat al Hajj, hadith referring to the description of the Hajj, and we'll, inshallah. When we go through the chapter of the description of Hajj, we will read through this hadith. Because it's the hadith of Jabir and Abdullah, which explains all of the actions of the Hajj of the Messenger of Allah. And within this, it mentions يعني, these, particular, uh, these particular times when it is uh, recommended to perform the talbiyah. As well as that, you have the statement as well. Of Ibrahim al Nakhai. Now, Ibrahim al Nakhai. Ibrahim al Nakhai is who? Tabi. Now, Tabi. And he mentions that they would, they would see it to be mustahab to perform the talbi at the end of the salawat. And when they would descend. Into the valley and ascend upon high ground. Or if they came upon one, an individual that is upon them that is riding. And so these are examples of when the Talbiya is legislated and is encouraged. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. And Alhamdulillah, that concludes what we wanted to discuss today regarding the Ihram. Next lesson, insha'Allah, we'll go on to discuss يعني, the mahdurat. So the things that harm the ihram or break that, that state of ihram. And there are nine of them. So we'll go through each of those nine, insha'Allah ta'ala. If Allah ta'ala permits us to conclude that. Jazakumullah khairan ikhwa wa barakallahu fikum. Wa sallallahu wa barakala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So, in relation to the intention, if a person makes the intention before the before an action, then we generally know this is bid'ah. If they state the intention with the tongue, right? And some will say, however, the exception is, as some of them mentioned, the exception is the uh, talbiyah. Or they mention Labbaik Allah Umrah Tamma Fala, Labbaik Allah Hajjah, or before they enter the Ihram. And they say this is the only time you can mention the intention. However, Sheikh Fawzan, he mentions that this is not, even this isn't mentioned the intention. Why? Because the intention is already there to perform the action. Naam. Rather, when a person is stating this upon the tongue, this is merely him performing an uh, uh, action from the rights of Hajj. Naam, and fulfilling that action for the rights of Hajj in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and not that he's in stating the intention and that he's making that he's making that binding upon the action itself Naam. so for example the one that says um, that when he begins the Salah he makes it binding that he has to mention the Salah that he's, he's going to pray the Ma'ar Raka'at whatever else they, they state in their intention Naam. this is not the case with the uh, the Hajj and the Ihram so this is the this is the the chef making that clear distinction between the two. No, not a clue. No. Yeah. Whether it should be two or not. Whether you should pray that or not. Is that actually from the sunnah and is that both for umrah and 
So it's for it's for enter for Umrah the Hajj enter the state of Ihram, and it's uh, mustahab. So it's not an obligation upon the individual, and that's from most uh, from most uh, high ulama. Say you're on a plane. When is that? If you're in the plane, then it's uh, harder, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's. Jim, they they tell you though, don't they? They're saying we're we're gonna pass the Mi'bad now because like you'll pass that. No. Well, generally speaking, then it is really for the one that is at the Mi'bad. Now, so for example, the one that is goes to Medina first, then he's gonna then he's going to assume ihram from Medina. Then he'll go to uh, uh, Dhul Um and there's a mess. There's a masjid there. There's there's a facilities there. Everything there. They didn't perform the salah there. But if a person's passing and they may pass pass by the mukhat, it could still be said that if they t- they're told they're approaching, it, they can still perform the salah with that intent, inshallah. But then you know, uh, of course, the person needs to be careful that they don't go past the mukhat and then miss the mukhat as well. Allah. <laughs> It's not, it's not, when you, like any action of ibadah, it's not permissible to be ignorant about it. So, as if, unless you're an individual that just knows, for example, Hajj is for my Islam and it's for my Hajj and you don't have any access to any knowledge about it, it may be, the person may be, ma'adhuri may be uh, excused. However, if you're talking about an individual now where he has access to knowledge, but due to what he may regard as being a burdensome amount of knowledge, he doesn't seek that knowledge and he, and he doesn't perform the hajj in a correct, correct manner. It may be, it, it's from what's apparent, he doesn't have the excuse to say that I, as of ignorance. Just as, for example, the person, he needs to perform his salah from his Islam. However, he doesn't perform it in the correct manner. He cannot now argue that I didn't have knowledge about the salah when the, the knowledge of salah is readily available for him. So like any form of ibadah, it has to be preceded with knowledge. And you can't just do it in any way, shape or form. Now, so as we mentioned, as is, as is known, the statement of Bukhari, Al-Ilm, Qabla Qali wa Amal, knowledge precedes speech and action. So the person has to have that knowledge, then they act upon it according to that thereafter. Now, You mentioned about um, the Miqat for Ahl al You said it's from their home, right? Yes. And you said about Ahl al-Makkah, that they have to go to Ahl al Also, Makkah is closer than... Uh, <coughs> Makkah is closer than? Makkah is closer to yani, Masjid al-Haram than Jeddah. Huh? Makkah is closer to Masjid al-Haram than Jeddah, yes. No, so, so is that not contradictory? Because yani, Ahl al they do it from their home. Because it's for a specific, a specific hukum for Ahlul Makkah. Oh, specific. Specific hukum for Ahlul Makkah. Yeah. So the way you look at it is like, let's say for example, we've got a spare piece of paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just a small thing. Yeah. So. I'll, I'll, I'll hold up in a second, inshallah. So, you have the each area of Miqat has a Miqat, okay? Then you have Makkah. Yeah. Now, Makkah and its inhabitants have its, has its own hukum. Yeah. Okay? As for anyone that lives in this area here, so you have you have the area surrounding and they have all the, all the Miqat. Now, then you have Makkah. Anyone who lives in Mecca has its own ruling. The ruling of the people of Mecca is what? For in terms of Miqat, is what? Where do they, where do they assume their ihram from? From? 
So, yani, this is the haram area. If it's for, they, they assume the ihram from outside. Naam, for what? To perform in what? Umrah. If they perform in Hajj, then they assume the ihram from where? Their home, so they remain in Mecca. Naam, does it make sense? If you're coming from any of these places outside, then you assume they make the, the ihram from that miqat, where it's Hajj or Umrah, then you enter Mecca. So, then you have this area in which is in between, where you live closer naam, to Mecca than you live to the miqat. So, in that case, you assume the ihram from, from your home. Now, you see, it may come from your home. And a clear example of that is Jeddah. Now, does that make sense? So, this is the area in between. So, then that's when you, you make that, you assume the Mikhaar from that. Now, half. And then, you know, when you mentioned that they say, you know, the saying, you know, when they're doing the Hajj, they say something, you know, the words they use. Labik Allah, man, Labik. Now, the women, you said they don't say anything. They, they can say it to themselves and they can move the lips in that manner. But I don't. Uh, what is mustahab in this action is that you raise the voice with it. But it's not mustahab for the women to raise their voice. So the women still mention it, but not with raised, not with a raised voice. Why? Because it's regarded, and uh, a lot of the scholars regard the voice of the woman to be from their aura. The adhan as well, likewise. You can suffice for ikama. Now, because the adhan is for is as the whole point of adhan is to notify the people about the salah. But a woman will not the the job the woman is never to notify people of any of anything like that. Now why you said you know when people are saying uh uh saying uh the Like one another, and they 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 say in unison, yeah, yeah, yeah. then this is a bid'ah. This is this, this is not this is not um, legislated. So would the action be void then? It wouldn't, be it wouldn't. It wouldn't be in terms of what action, sorry. So that action, the action, you wouldn't say that action is accepted if they're saying it all together and they're making it as if this is part of the rights of Hajj. If they're doing it like that, then no, this is not this is not from the action that we say that you could say I accepted Allah Taala's best. Why? Because it's in the opposition to the to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. However, a person doing it, then there's no there's no harm in actually just doing it. Of course, this is all rubbish legislated in saying the word. What you may find as well is that a person finds himself saying it along with others, and it's not it's not intentional. Now he's saying it, and it just so happens that the words that he's saying at the same time as uh, the words of another. Now, if that's the case, that's that's something else. Because he hasn't gone out with the intent of saying it in unison. Because some individuals will say it in unison with the belief that saying it in unison is, makes this particular uh, telebiya stronger. Nah, I'm not just know that this is Barty. Nah, no, no, same thing. Same thing. The person should still just say it for themselves. The, the, if they encourage people to do it, then of course they they are sinful. They're calling people to do something which is opposed to the sunnah. So if if now they encourage people to do it, then this is something which is yani mukhalif al haq. If that makes sense. No. Just going to put the brother said and if you go with that to Melda or something, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're not aware of what to say and things like that. Yeah. So you repeat it to them. You know, there's more than one. Yeah, I mean, naturally, if you say it, they're going to say it back to you. So you say it and then they say it back to you. No, they'll, obviously they'll repeat after you, but naturally they're going to somewhat kind of do it together. And if they repeat after you, this is better. So it, 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 because it's a, it's a means of teaching them no, and teaching them in action. So yeah, oh, there's a few of them, mm, yeah. Back to you. Avoid it. Avoid it. Even though it's, it's, this is regarding ta'ali, this is ta'ali. First and foremost, try to encourage them to learn it before mm. for themselves. This is the first thing. If for whatever reason that they they uh, they are restricted from that they don't they don't have the ability to do that then try to avoid doing it in in that in that unison why because even though this is min bab ta'alim you're teaching them 
it could be understood by you know, the onlookers that this is how you perform this action. No. No. Sorry. Yeah. Does it have to? Is it that you have to put that white thing on on the plane once you land, or can you right. go there and then do it after like a day later? Or no, no. So, uh, let's say for example, now you are um, coming from here and you're flying directly right. to Saudi, right? Uh, you're flying directly to Jeddah. You, it's just a recommendation. <coughs> But the best thing I would say is you could either wear the whole ihram from home, naam, and then and then go on the plane like that, or what I generally find to be easier is that you wear the izar at the bottom, naam, you wear the thobe on top, wear a thobe on top as normal. When you're informed that you're getting closer, naam, when you're on the plane and you're informed you're getting closer, go to the bathroom, take off the thobe, put on the top the top cloth for the of the of the ihram clothing and then start from then if that makes sense so you have to the, the uh, according to the point is you have to be in the state before you uh pass the miqat if that makes sense you have to wear that clothing before you pass the miqat so you can't now say i'm as you mentioned i'm going to wear it afterwards or i'm going to put it on once i get to my hotel in makkah no because you have to have passed the miqat in that state, and part of that state is having the clothing on. And you have to have wudu and all that with it, or this, that doesn't matter. No, wudu is legislated for the the uh, beginning, so it's for the tawaf. You need to have wudu, but uh, being in that state is it, it, not it's not a uh, condition that you have you in a state of purity. If that makes sense, to be in a state of ihram is not a condition that you're in a state of purity. Because, for example, if you're in ihram, especially for example, if you're doing hajj. You're going to break a wudu at some point. It's going to be over days. Yeah, yeah. No. So it's not, it's, it's not legislated that you're in a state of purity, per se. No. Yeah. It's not. Oh, yeah. No. If you're making tawaf and your wudu broke, you need to call and make it. You have to make a wudu again. No. No. You have to make a wudu again for the tawaf. Especially as well, because after that, you have to perform the salah. Yeah. It's no. It's okay to wait until you've done your seven. No. <laughs>